When we started the Oregon Hops and Brewing Archives, I knew it would be different than a more traditional archive, but would still be a place where we would save and provide access to materials. But quickly, I realized that it was an opportunity to have new and unique conversations with a community, to talk to them about their stories and their own history. And these are some of the stories that we heard that we really think are worth saving. It's amazing how a small industry, a few growers in, in, in Oregon, can influence the world with what we grow. It's cultural here, as you know. I mean, starting a brewery, I feel like we've just woven ourselves into the fabric of our local culture, uh, Corvallis and, and then Oregon and the Northwest. The USDA has had a footprint here on campus since the 30s. So if you kind of use hops research, hop breeding as a kind of connection to brewing, then we've had hop, you know, we've had brewing research going on for 80 years. We have a pretty long history at OSU of doing research related to hops and brewing. So our mission, both as a land grant university is to share that, and as a library is to um, help people have materials that support their research, both OSU materials and outside materials. You know, the broad idea here is that we give the craft brewers a bigger palette of paint to play with in the terms of new hops to brew with. If you look at brewers, you talk to them about yeast, oh, they're kind of excited. You talk about malt, oh, they're kind of excited. You talk about hops, and they just light up. They just think it's really cool. It also connects us to place, so thinking about where um, our food comes from, thinking about where our ingredients come from, thinking about how we can do things ourselves. A big aspect of that is growing what, as much as we can to go into the beer. Growing our ingredients that go into the beer really connects us directly to the whole process of brewing. Hops are a food product, so it's, you know, know where your food comes from is important to all of us. Or maybe a brewer who is not close to a hop growing area and just knows hops that are, you know, they come in a corrugated cardboard box and a foil pouch that's vacuum sealed and that's the extent of what they see of hops and from there they don't, they don't know, you know, those foil bags don't grow in our field, that's not what <laughs> happens, you know. There's a whole thing, process and story, family stories that lead up to that box landing on the doorstep of the brewery, so. When I was casting about trying to figure out how to build a brewery, I could walk into any brewery and explain what I was up to and I would immediately be welcomed back. They'd pour me a pint and they'd, they'd uh, throw open the brewery and say, what do you want to see? What, do you, what questions do you want answered? Uh, they were excited for me. When Bridgeport and Widmer Brothers Brewing started in 1984, craft brewing was really in its infancy in Oregon, with the only brewing that we would consider craft today being done by home brewers, like those in the Oregon Brew Crew Club, and by Chuck Corey, who was a vintner that started the short-lived Cartwright Brewing Company in Portland. We're great-grandsons and great-granddaughters of pioneers who are willing to try everything, you know. They don't need to see it on TV to, to validate it, you know. Uh, and there's no better place on the face of the earth than Portland, Oregon for, for doing what we did. It didn't really need the 30th anniversary to kind of start re re reflecting a little bit. For me, it would be like on weekends when it's, you know, kind of quiet and I'm walking through and kind of looking at things and it's like, wow, this is pretty awesome. You know, we've come a long way in the last, you know, so many years, so. What's, what's fun for me is, is the, the emergence of the 30 beers, because they are the actual beers that we did in that year, like 27 years ago. When we nail it, I mean, it's, even though I haven't had that beer in like 25 years, it's like, oh my God, that is so exactly what we did 25 years ago. Like, I can remember that year, those times, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's fun. It's really fun. This archive isn't just about hop growing or beer brewing, but is really about the culture of the whole industry. 
So you'll find stories about everything from labor practices to history to agriculture to economics to gender dynamics represented in our collections. Rubber boots are the ubiquitous piece of brewing equipment. Every brewer wears rubber boots of some kind or another. And I had chosen pink because um, because it's the girl color and, and you know, I walk into a brewery, I start talking the beer lingo, next thing you know, I'm just one of the guys. But it was, I was keenly aware that I was representing my gender. And so I wanted to remind, let's say, the whole world that, yeah, I'm one of the boys, I'm one of the brewer, I'm a brewer, but I'm also a woman too. And they say you shouldn't, shouldn't attach yourself to your career, but it's not just a, a job, it's not just a career, it's, it's a calling and it's a part of who I am. As every generation goes along, we're losing just a little bit more of it. It takes someone from outside of our industry to be able to come and understand the importance and capture it for us um, because, it, again, it influences so many people in so many parts of the world. I think it's good to have that information archived so that we can always pull from it and and know where we were and where we are and hopefully you know be able to tell a story about where we might be going.